Okay, I know you do fight fans. It's EJ Boxing live here. Um, today we're going to discuss um, the inductees for 2015 um, Boxing Hall of Fames. I'm here with Boxing Beats and Rhymes, Chris Caban, UK Boxing Blogger News, and Ben Umar. Um, so we're going to go around, um, go around, go around each individually. I'm going to ask go individually. They're going to give us our picks. Um, each of us is gonna either say yeah they're in or not obviously we know some people have been picked in already in the Hall of Fame we, we already know their names already but obviously this is our picks so who we think is going in so they're not necessarily on the ballot but the guys that we nominated the criteria is yeah, they, the fight they should not be um, be boxing within five years span um, like I said um, these are the criteria and also non-participants um, these are like sports writers um, trainers cut men and them notable names as well. So um, we're gonna get straight into it. I'm gonna go to my main man, Boxing Beats of Rams, with his first nominee. Go ahead, Beats. Tim Riverspoon. Tell us about him, Bex. Tim Riverspoon, on his way up, he beat Ronaldo Snipes, who was a great contender. You know, Ronaldo Snipes gave Greg Page, a future heavyweight champion, his first loss. He nearly knocked out Larry Holmes. He decisioned that guy there. He beat a cruiserweight champion or Alfonso Ratliff when Alfonso Ratliff was a good, good, good fighter. Luis Acosta was very tough. And um, he had a good, good hard apprenticeship. I thought he beat Holmes. I actually thought he beat Holmes. 12 round split decision loss. Great fight. He went on to um, beat James Tillis in one round. One round, you know, as you know, James Tillis went on to take Tyson the distance. Some people say James Tillis actually got a draw in that fight. A lot of people said that at the time. He beat Greg Page for a majority decision to actually win his world title belt. Greg Page was a very good heavyweight. Yeah, he lost a sleeper to, to, to Pinklin Thomas, but he got it back. He beat Tony Tubbs. Tony Tubbs, very good fighter. This was um, 15 round days. He knocked out Frank Bruno in the 11th round in a great fight. Um, he lost to James Brock, Bone Crusher Smith, but there was a lot of politics. No excuses, a loss is a loss, but he actually defeated Smith on points before that. 12 round decision, and he gave him a good beat. Gave him a really good beat. And um, he's got good outside wins out of us, like the Anders Eklund KO, spectacular. Tim Riverspoon's overhand right, his head movement, his inside game, on the right day, you know, really good fighter, man. Really good fighter. You know, he beat Rebolta, Williams. He, like, he was like he was the one guy that was always on people's lips when they said, what if Tyson fought him in the 80s? Because Tyson was blamed for everyone. But Witherspoon never got the fight. Never, he never got that fight. And he was one guy a lot of people in the trade thought might have been able to do something against Mike. So that's my nomination. Excellent. So I'm going to write that down right now. So we've got Tim Witherspoon, the first inductee for the Boxer International Boxing Hall of Fame. Now, bear in mind, you guys, you're going to see the ballot on the screen. And the ballot on the screen, that doesn't have Tim Witherspoon. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter, right? He beats, as far as Beats is concerned, he should have been on the ballot. And Beats is nominating him. So now I'm going to go to the panel. Now, the panel has to decide whether we feel we should induct him into the Hall of Fame, even though not officially he's in, but in, in our thing, he should be in. So I'm going to first go to Lee. And Lee, um, you know, give us your take on, on you think he should go in or you think he should go in. So, Lee, what do you think I about think, Tim Robinson? I, I, I think 100% he should go in. Clearly, everything Beat said was to the point. Not only that, later on in his career, you know, he was still duking it out with some some top top heavyweights you know the guy was is a is an old school fighter the last of a great era in my opinion you know and rightly so he, he was one of the guys that maybe could have challenged tyson in his prime you know great great fighter gotta be in there all right lee so lee gets the thumbs up mr chris caban yeah i got him going in what? I got him going in. I grew up watching him. I watched his fights. So I thought he should be. I thought he should have been on the list a long time ago. Okay, so you give him the thumbs up as well. Yeah, I gave him two thumbs up. Yes. Good man. You can mute yourself. Thanks very much, Chris Caban. 
and uh, myself as well. And I definitely, definitely, he should be on the ballot for real. And I'll definitely give him a thumbs up. So the first inductee for our into the International Boxing Hall of Fame who should be on the ballot is Tim Witherspoon. Tim, uh, what's his middle name? Tim, I, I swear, Terrible Tim Witherspoon is the first. Yeah, Tim Witherspoon. Yeah. Terrible Tim Witherspoon is the first inductee for the Boxing Hall of Fame who we feel should be an inductee. All right, so I've gone for Boxing Beats and Rams. That's Boxing Books and Rams. First a nominee. All right, so we're going to go to Lee. Lee, who's your first nominee for the Boxing Hall of Fame? Right, well, I'm just going to go with the guys on the list. Um, so, and, and one that I truly believe in as well is Prince Nassim Hamid. Mm -hmm. I'll give my reasons why. I think he was a guy that peaked very early. He's a, a great young fighter. Uh, comes from the Brendan Ingle Winker Bank gym in Sheffield. He was uh, trained. Why he was trained with that guy, I believe he... he he, that guy tapped into his true potential in my opinion you know he started at a very young age um, he was a decent uh, bantamweight European level title fighter then he's decent couple of decent wins in super bantamweight notably Freddy Cruz stepped up and took on Steve Collins for the WBO featherweight title took him out uh, that was his signature win put him down as a heavy um, featherweight champion at the age of 21 a real you young Robinson, guy. Sorry to cut you. Do you mean Steve Robinson? Steve Robinson, yeah, the Welsh oh. dude, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. WBO title, yeah. And uh, took took Steve Robinson out Steve Robinson out. And then um obviously went on to defend his title a few times, um, notably against Medina. Uh, but then obviously he got his uh first unification belt where he took on the long reigning Tom Boom Johnson for the IBF strap. You know, and he took him out in big style, and then he went on to have a few good wins after that. Man, uh, most a big, big fight was a Kevin Kelly fight. A lot of uh, pre-fight build up to that. Went over into the Madison Square Garden. It was a great fight, fight of the year. Uh, Nassim Hamid was showed his vulnerability in that fight, but also showed his power and heart. Um, he then beat another guy who's on the list. So to be inducted into the Hall of Fame this year, Wilfredo Vasquez. Um, he also went on and beat guys like McCulloch, um, Bungu, who went on to be a, uh, a world champion. Paul Ingle himself went on to be a world champion. Um, he won the WBC strap, so he's held three of the versions of the featherweight title. The Orgy Sanchez fight was a real dangerous fight at the time. Uh, the guy was meant to be something, but Hamid brutalized him and he obviously went on to lose to Barrera we know about that but you know at that time he was he was with Stewart and, and I personally feel like his mojo had gone and he was trying to um, be more you know uh, just be more technical which I don't think suited his style you know I think he was a young man arrogant type fighter you know I think he primed young I know he come back against the old European champion uh, or a former European champion in that Manuel Calvo. Went 12 rounds, a bit disappointing. There was a pay-per-view card on Sky at the time. But, you know, I think he'd done enough in a short period of time from a young age to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. He held the WBC, WBO, IBF strap. You know, he had... A, Couple of, he had a few decent fights. He had a lot of future and former world champions on his resume. You can't really argue with that, you know. He'd done some good things even in the early divisions for, for how young he was at 18 years of age. You know, so I'm a big fan. He's got to be in there, in my opinion. Great stuff, Lee. Excellent. Yeah, but also, I would like to say one thing as well. He transcended the sport. You know, he was on ITV, one of the last... Uh, terrestrial TV stars, you know, he everybody knew who he was. You know, he got um, nice, uh, you know, endorsement deals with Adidas and car firms, and come in and, and always was a crowd pleaser. His entrances were the ticket. He lived up to whatever he said he would do, you know. And you know, I just think I, I just don't like the way he's remembered for just that one, you know, twelve round decision loss to Barrera, and I, and I think that shouldn't be held against him. Great stuff, Lee. Well, uh, good for you that Nassim Hamid is, is definitely been inducted in the Hall of Fame. 
and now we will, now we're gonna go through the go through our, our people on on the panel right now to see if he's gonna get into the national international boxing hall of fame in our list. So first, I'm gonna go to Chris. Chris, how do you feel um, that Prince Nassim Hamid should be inducted in the Hall of Fame, or do you think not? Let us know. I think he should get in. I definitely think he should get in. Entertainer, good fighter. I like him. All right, Chris. Well, thanks very much, Chris. Uh, boxing be some rams. Um, I'm tempted to chicken out, and but you know, look, look, look. the good fighter is a good champion. Yeah, he fought some good fighters, but the facts are, when you look at Tim Riverspoon, you know, you see him going with Holmes and all the elite guys you know the, i mean like he, he took them on he fought he won he beat them the prince when he came up again and i'm gonna say his first elite fighter he fought was barrera that was his first elite fighter he fought and people can say his hands were bad he changed his stuff he lost and he lost big time and he didn't make no attempt to redeem himself after that to beat an elite fighter he did it. He did it. And that's the facts. But I'm going to put him in there, but I'm going to put him on a lower tier than Tim Witherspoon. Mm. Because he wasn't, he was entertaining, he was exciting. But even though sometimes I watch him and he looked very amateurish, man, jump in, miss by a mile, fall into the ropes. And um, he got exposed by her. All of that got exposed. And I'm using the word exposed. It got exposed by Barrera, right? He there was times where he tried to drop his hands, Barrera just banged the jab in, bang, and wobbled him, and he got exposed. In the but I'll put him in there. I'll put him in there. I'll put him in there. But if he, I tell you what, if he had to fight the the, the likes of um, Morales and Barrera, if them guys and Marquez were coming into his record four, four or five, six times, he wouldn't be in there. But I'll put him in. He wouldn't be in there. Yeah, but I think I think like he primed younger, in my opinion. No, 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 Lee. That's my opinion. You can't just no, 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 Lee, 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 Lee. That's my opinion. Okay. I put him in. You, 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 you know what I mean? That's my opinion. I didn't okay. say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lee, Lee, one minute, yeah, because we were, I'm controlling the thing at the minute. So you know, when someone's nominated or nominated, you're not supposed to say anything yeah, already because you've already said your piece. Beast, even though Beast has reluctantly put him in there, he's got in. Right, and obviously my opinion, and Ben Umar is obviously not here at the minute, so we, you know, we'll get him later on. But for me, definitely the prince is definitely prince, and he's been in, and and he's been, he's. They've already said to, uh, at the minute that he's been inducted. And it's a shame that Kevin Kelly wasn't on the ballot to be the two of them going together. But it is what it is. Um, prince Nazim Hamid, like 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 Lee said, trans anything, and I, I definitely agree that Prince, the prince from Sheffield, Winkerbank, did achieving what he did achieve. Maybe he, didn't, maybe he didn't get the Ultimate thing of beating Barrera, but definitely um, his career and, and people do remember him fondly as the Prince Nassim and they brought fun and entertainment and knockouts and brought the Featherweight division for some of the most highest purses. And for that, definitely for me, he gets into the International Boxing Hall of Fame, which he will be in Canastolia next year. And definitely, so Chris, uh, me, and Boxing Beast around, we agree. So Lee, your guy goes in, your first nominee on your first ballot. Great job, Lee. All right. So moving on to Chris Caban, and again, I'll put out again, um, people listening, fight fans. They don't. I know we have a ballot in front of us, as you can see, but like there's other nominated names are not on the ballot, and I'm sure Chris is probably going to nominate a guy who's not on the ballot. But but this guy definitely deserves to be in. So without further ado, I'll allow Chris to introduce his first nominee. Go ahead, Chris. You already know who I got. I got Michael Nunn, Michael the Second the Nunn. He beat Sumbul Kelly, man. People thought. That was an upset at the time. People had Colin Bay beating him big, and he knocked him out in the first round. He beat Iran Bartley. He beat Frank Tay. All these are tough opponents. He beat Juan Rodan. He beat Donna Curry, even though he was faded a little bit. He beat Marlon Stallings. He was a small guy, but he beat Marky Sosa, and he also beat people like John Scully. And at that time, I thought, uh, Michael Nunn was pound for pound, and it was talks of him fighting Tommy Hearns and Sugar Ray Leonard at the time. People won them fights. Okay, Chris, anything else you want to add to that? 
Okay. Now I just want to see. I want to see what the guys on the panel got for my pick. <laughs> Chris was anxious. All right, for Chris, well, 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 anxious is Chris anxious. All right, for the first person I'm gonna um, ask is boxing beats around. You go nay or no, uh, or you agree with uh, Chris's pick? Go ahead, beats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, he was ducked, ducked by a lot of fighters. Leonard didn't want it. A few guys didn't want it. You know, we couldn't get the Hearns fight. Awkward as hell. Like to block that uppercut. Forget about it. Forget about it. You know, and like um. The, the Barkley fight was touch and go, but then I mean, I'm, I mean, Barkley, you know, I've got some surprises there. Um, he was he, he was just a nightmare to fight, a really good champion. It took a, a legitimate ATG fighter to take his crown, and he still came back and won a super middleweight title. You know, he, it, to me, that it's it's a no-brainer. Michael Nunn is a no-brainer. Yeah. Excellent. Um, Lee, anything else you want to add to that? Well, Chris summed it up perfectly. You know, he's a two-weight world champion. Could have been a three-weight world champion. Very close to it. You know, beat some great names. You know, you you, you can't argue with that. Mhm. Okay. All right. So we... I, plus, I'm not even going there with Chris. <laughs> no, you listen, mate. I'm joking. I'm joking. No, you, you deserve to be in there. No, no two ways about it. All right. Great stuff, Lee. Thanks for that. And for me, definitely, so Michael second to none. So one of the first guys I recognise that from Nigel Ben and um, Chris Eubank and them guys from the Americans that, you know, these guys, they, they were aware of this dude, man. He was a fair dude in America. He was doing his thing. He was pound for pound, the top guy, and um, Southpaw, you know, and they were touting him up like Leonard and um, definitely had charisma and stuff like that. Shame how his career went, where his career went later on after losing to... Um, James Tony, but he did catch another belt, so a two weight champion, and um, definitely, definitely. I mean, people probably got about Chris is a passionate guy. Chris is my favorite number one pick, and I second Chris's pick for Michael second to none going into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. Who's not on the ballot, by the way, by the way, but you know, this guy should have been, he should have been, so definitely. All right, Chris, I said he definitely going in. All right, moving on to my first pick. My first pick. My first pick is gonna be on the ballot. Um, so just let you know, cause um, and I could pick it outside the ballot, but you know, I might as well go by the structure thing I already picked. My first pick is gonna be Janando Hernandez. Janando Hernandez, yeah, it was a tough uh, fire out of. Um, he was fighting out of um, Los Angeles. Um, east, east. I think it's no, not Eastern. I think it's is it East? I think it's East Los Angeles, and. Um, Definitely a Hall of Famer. This guy went on to just went on defending his belt eight times in the super featherweight division, fighting the likes of Jorge Pius, um, moving up to lightweight to challenge against Oscar De La Hoya. Even though he lost, but he went up there to fight him because he knew this was a big fight. He never shied away from big challenges. Then after recapturing the WBC super featherweight title against Azuma Nelson, everyone thought he was going to lose, especially after he lost to um, Oscar De La Hoya. Then catching a belt and defending against Carlos and Hernandez, and then eventually losing to the guy we know today is one of the best pound for pound of any generation, Floyd Mayweather Jr. And I'm telling you, man, he, listen, mate. If anyone told you, man, Chinando Hernandez with his size and everything, he'll give anyone trouble at five foot eleven in the super super featherweight division, nearly six foot. I mean, we know um, Diego Torales was around that size, but Chinando Hernandez had very skill size, and he gave Azuma Nelson, who at the time was the champion. Right, all the trouble you can, and Jorge Pius, he can end up stopping Jorge Pius. Um, like I said to you, defending about multiple times. Um, it was a great champion. And my first uh, nominee is Janando Hernandez. Um, so I see what the first ballot. So I'm gonna go with um, Lee. What do you think, Lee? Name, mm. go in or not? Um, you convince me, man. I must say. You know, ordinary, uh, yeah, man, what calls from what you said. And yeah, he's got to be, isn't it? If, we, if we're matching it up with other criteria of what people have been in there, you know, he's got to be, in. not Yeah, I agree. Okay, thanks for having Yeah, yeah, you put a very, very good argument there, man. Uh, initially, when you said that, I was ready to jump all over it, but you can't really argue with that. <laughs> thanks for being honest. All right, um, uh, so that's Lee. Um, so that's Lee gives thumbs up. Um, Chris Caban? Okay, we we'll go to Chris in a second. Boxing beats and Rams. It's, it's lower tier. Like, I remember when he beat up Daniel Londers, and Londers was one of my favourite fighters at European. He was really good. But um, 
I don't see the elite names on there, bro. I don't see the elite names. It's got a lot of volume there, but there's a lot of guys who could get nominated with volume, like Gilbert or Roman. I can't verify a lot of the opponents. Um, Azuma Nelson, good win. He was still champion. Doesn't matter if he was old, he still had the belt. Yeah? So, on the strength of beating Azuma Nelson and Daniel Londers. Who gave Pius? Uh, I think Pies was shot by then, bro. Um, I think Pies was shot by then, to be honest. But nevertheless, he, I mean, he got the W. Um, he beat guys like Harold Warren. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, I'll put him on there, lower tier. No problem. I'll, I'll put him on there. Hey, lower listen, tier. bro. I was just about sweating there, my first. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I'll be sweating. And listen, any day, people listening. You know, this isn't a given that everyone has to get in. You know, like Beast is Beast, you know. Like I said to you, he defended the Super Featherweight title, title seven times and then he relinquished it to fight Oscar De Loeb when he moved up. And then obviously after beating Azuma Nelson, he defended it like um, another belt, the WBC belt, like uh, four, five times before losing against Floyd. So, end of the day, you know, you know, the, you know, no one has to get in. You leave your opinion, comments in the comment section. But um, I thank Beast. Is Chris, you ready to say anything, Chris? Yeah, I'm ready. Go ahead, Chris. Al, your boy getting in by the skin of his teeth. It was some good wins, but he beat up a lot of old men too. Okay, go ahead, Chris. But, tell tell the man, he got some. Um, he had some good dog. Uh, I ain't gonna take no um, excuses from Azuma Nelson, so even though he still was old at that point. And, but I put him in. He had some tough opponents. They were French contenders, but they were tough as hell. <laughs> you guys made me sweat for that. You guys made me sweat. So I'll, I'll take that and I'm out of here. So <laughs> Jalando Hernandez gets in the box international. Yeah, I put my opinion on it. Uh, hold on, one minute, Umar. We're just finishing up, Umar. We're just finishing up. Um, Jalando Hernandez gets in. Oh, oh, okay, sorry, Umar. Umar, you wanna you wanna say your little you're, you're saying that, Umar? No, no. Before Umar starts, give Umar the other nominees and see if it put them through just quickly. Okay, all right. No, okay. Before my, okay, before my, I, um, uh, Tim Witherspoon um, was boxing beats his nominee. Umar, what do you have to say about that? I have no objections to uh, Terrible Tim. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, Lee's um, pick, first first ballot pick was uh, Prince Nassim Hamid. Alhamdulillah, you already know how I feel about that one. Uh, well, the boxing world needs to know Umar because everyone's listening, so make sure it's clear that everyone knows that you, you pick him, yes or no. All right, Chris's first pick was Michael Seckle to none. Um, um, considering the conversation we had the other day, I'm surprised you didn't veto that yourself. But I have no, I have no, uh, I have no problems with second to none, man. He he had a lot of good wins besides uh, getting knocked out by James Tony, but he, I think he deserves to be in there. <laughs> okay, thanks for that. All right, so free, and then my last pick, um, um, Janando Hernandez. He's like the- like Chris said, I think he gets in by the skin of his teeth because he did catch a lot of guys at the end of their run. But the amount of title defenses he had, uh, that's, he deserves deserves a spot. You guys are killing me. All right, thanks for that, Benz. All right, so that's Benz. All right, so um, that's my nominee. Now we're gonna go to um, lucky you just came in, Benz. All right, so Ben Umar, Ben Umar, you're gonna give us your first pick for the boxing international boxing hall of fame. All right, you already know I'm going with Lennox the Lion Lewis. Oh no! One minute, Uma. One minute. Oh yeah, it is. It is. Oh yeah, it's five years. You're right. Go ahead, Uma. Yeah. Sorry. Way past. It's way past five years. Lennox the Lion Lewis. I mean, he fought Evander Holyfield twice. He beat him both times, but got you know a shaky decision the first one. Got an old Mike Tyson, but he did get the fight done. And just like the fans are complaining today that they still want to see Pacquiao Mayweather way after his prime, he got a job done. He beat Frank Buna. He lost Oliver McCall came back and made him have a nervous breakdown in the ring with the beating he was given. Got knocked out by Hasim Rahman, came back and knocked him out in style. I mean, what other heavyweight you know in history to get knocked out by two guys and just come back in the, in the next fight and school him and, and, and destroy him in the ring? I mean, he's got a lot. He beat Vitaly Klitschko. He, he's just got a lot of wins. He's a great fighter. I think he's top five heavyweight of all time. No question in my opinion. I think there's no way anybody can deny him that Hall of Fame. Excellent. All right, so make sure everyone's muted so we don't get no feedback, by the way. Thank you very much, peoples. Thank you very much. All right, so uh, Ben Newman's first pick in the ballad uh, in that box of fame is Lennis the Lion Lewis, and um, I'll second that, and I have nothing more to add to that. Um, I'm going to go to Lee. What do you think, Lee? I 
No, yeah, I, I would. You can't argue with that. But if if it was that, I, I'm 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 all for that. But I don't know about the top five of all time. But that's a different kettle of fish. But yeah, no, no, you can't deny him that spot in the Hall of Fame. Not at all. Great stuff, Lee. Thanks for that, Chris Caban. Um, he beat. Yeah, he should be in the Hall of Fame. He beat top contenders too. He, he destroyed Ray Mercer. He didn't destroy him. He had a fight. He had a good fight with Ray Mercer. He won. He destroyed Ray Zerudic and Tommy Morrison. And he beat Holyfield twice. And he beat Mike Tyson. So hell yeah, he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. All right, great stuff. Great, great, great for that. Um, boxing beat some Rams. Easy work, easy work, easy work, easy work. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, of course. That's clean across the board. Now, you fight fans listening to this, if you feel any sort of objection to this, yeah, I'm not going to mention no names, but leave your comments in the comment section and we will address it in our videos when it's on the channel. So, as yeah. further ado, we will. Let me add to that. Let me add to that, Errol. Sorry. Um, if you guys think um, some guys should be in, just like I do, but they're not on the same level, just put lower tier. You know, I've got Hammond and Hernandez down on the lower tier, but they're in. No one's came out so far. So to add that. No I like to say that the, on, on the Boxing Hall of Fame, by the way, there's no lower tiers. Either you're in or you're out, by the way. But yeah. Beats is the stay in that if you want to put that. Right? Yeah. So let's move on. Well, this, this is our thing. Let, so me, let me move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. All right? Let's move on. So we go to non participants. Right? Non participants. Now, this is a bit different. This is a bit different now. Because these are the guys who are not necessarily fighters. They're corner men and, and people that not necessarily fired, but they've contributed a lot in the, in the boxing world. And like, there's a ballot in front of us, but like I pointed out before, right? Like I pointed out before, if there's a guys and they, you know, if they've been inactive, or maybe, yeah, inactive, but as I've been saying that, certain people are active still. I still actually feel because they're not really in the ring. You can nominate them. So on the ballot of non-participants, as you can see, fight fans on the list here, there's some names here. So I'm gonna go to Boxing Beats and Rams um, on non-participants. Who have you got? Boxing beats and rams. Yeah, Nigel Collins, personal favourite writer of mine. And um, no, just yeah, just tell us about Nigel Collins and and, that, and that's it. Uh, he's rock for Ring Magazine, I believe. Well, I know him more for the um, boxing news, Ring Magazine. Great, just a great writer. He's always um, very upfront with what he's got to say. Doesn't pull no punches. And he just keeps it real. He's one of my favourite writers, so, you know, I like Nigel Collins. Nigel Collins. Nigel Collins, where's he from? The UK, yeah? Is he... I think... No, Nigel, no, Nigel Collins... It's Nigel I Collins. I don't know speak. I've just known him for right. I think he might be... I'm not, I'm, I think he, I'm not sure. He might be American. Might be American. That's a good question. I've just, I'm just, re, um, just read his work. Just, just read his work for years, since the 80s. I used to buy the boxing news and you know KO magazine. He yeah. used to write for the Ring or KO. But he's a, he's a great, pro prolific writer, man. Prolific writer. I believe Beats. I believe he is American because he yeah. writes for ESPN boxing right now. I see. I, I read some of his stuff as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks for that, um, Ben Umar contributing. So we're gonna go around the panel. And Umar, you already just spoke that there. So I'm gonna ask you Umar first. Um, does he get in or does he not get in? I mean, I, I, I can't really argue with Beats. I, I've, re I've read some of his recent work on ESPN Boxing, and it's it's always good, but Beats has a lot more years in this than me, so I, I would have to um, uh, side with him in this. I can't really argue that fact, so I'm going to say, yeah, he gets in. Okay, thanks for that. Um, Lee? Hey, hey. Remember, mute, you need to mute yourself, people, because we're getting feedback. So if you're doing anything in the background, please, thank you very much. Go ahead, Lee. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll second that. Obviously, I don't know, I don't know anything about the guy, but you know, if beats out of all the people we could have mentioned, feels that that guy should be there, then you know, he, he must be a good writer. I may have read some of this stuff. I read a lot of boxing magazines, so yeah, I'll second with that. So. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, Chris Caban. Yeah, that, that's easy. He was, he's a great writer. He's been around for a minute too, a good minute. So yes. Okay, thanks for that mute yourself. Thanks very much, Chris. And myself, I do, you, to be honest with you, I don't know too much about them, and this is why this is so good about this Boxing International Hall of Fame. Um, 
you guys get to listen and get to know about some guys maybe you don't know about and go and do your research on these guys and you know as Beats just mentioned you know he wasn't too sure and Umar co collaborated with him that he was from he's from the states and um so this non participant that for me I have I don't know too much about him and I really should, you know he's on the ballot but um from what Beats was saying about him what I do know he sounds like he's contributing in boxing for many years and um for me I have no objection to it I've no idea. Anyone who put that much work in in the boxing sports writing for that many years, the Ring magazine, all, all the notable um, articles and stuff like that, I have no objection to it. If you do, if you do have an objection to it, leave your comments in the comments and we will address it in our videos. So for me, he gets in and across the board. Nigel Collins gets in a non-participant in the, um, the International Boxing Hall of Fame, as far as we're concerned. All right, we're going to move down the list. So we're going to go to Lee, non-participant Lee. Well, I'm going to have to do someone that's not on the list, Brendan Ingle. Nice okay. one, nice one, Lee. Go ahead. Right, and, the, and the reason for, right, the guy's had an incredible, credible story to his life. You know, he, he come over from Ireland back when it weren't a great time to come over from Ireland in the UK. He worked really hard and he created his own gym and he's got a certain philosophy. You know, he, one... He likes to get, he still, and when he was training people like Niles and your Johnny Nelsons and that, he was still believed in the fundamentals behind keeping the kids off the street, teaching them morals and discipline. But not only that, he would he had a, a way like customer, I'm not saying it's in the same way, but he could get inside a, a, kid, a child's head or a fighter's head. He, he, he really nurtured them, you know, and, he, and not only that, he again, made fighters didn't have ready made fighters and the list is endless and he put his style on them fighters or he put he encouraged the fighters to fight with their own styles you know uh you guys like harold errol graham errol graham uh, nasim hamid johnny nelson ryan rhodes um junior witter uh then you've got guys like even the new new guys like kid galahad kel brook endless amount of fighters johnny uh, Faxton, just loads of guys. There's guys I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting, and or, or I don't even know. Just a, 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 a never-ending stream of decent talent coming out of that gym. Um, he's still going. He's still there today, doing all the good work for for the younger generation. He's even taught his sons, um, notably Dominic Ingle, to be a great, uh, not a great trainer, but a very good trainer that can be trusted with high-level fighters. You know, so he's passed his philosophy and all his wisdom and knowledge on and he's still doing great work for the community and kids he's a role model and some of the guys uh what are in this hall of fame that are non-participants haven't done half as much as this guy's done for the sport professionally for the kids and for the community man so this guy's got to go in a true legend great so great said lee great said and i, I boy and um, I'm going to go around the panel, so um, first off, I'm going to ask um, Chris, how you feel about that? I yes. Do you know much about Brendan Ingle? Yeah, I've seen him train, I've seen his fighters, yes. Okay, cool, Chris. Yeah, well, Chris does not give a nod yet, and that's all we need to know. Um, ben Umar. Yeah, I mean, I I, I heard of uh, Brendan Engel through being such a big fan of Prince Nassim Hamed as a kid, and I know he's got a famous gym over there, and he's trained a lot of fighters, like Lee said, and Johnny Nelson, and, and several other guys that you guys know better than me. And I think there's no reason why he doesn't, with all those world champions he has under his belt, I, I think there's no reason why he shouldn't go into the Hall of Fame at some point. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Me, myself, before I ask Beats, I definitely would second he, that he goes into the international box of him, even though he's not nominated in the ballot. Um, I'd put him over Jim Lanty. You know, he's done much more for boxing over there in Sheffield with a little Winker Bank gym, over there taking young young delinquents who they could have got themselves into really serious trouble and took them off the streets and turned them into seasoned pros with his orthodox style, Southpaw and um, Southpaw and orthodox style, um, Brendan Ingle style. Everyone knows the Ingle, Ingle style boxers anywhere around the world the way they fight. Um, Junior Witter, uh, like he said, Ryan Rose, um, Prince Nassim Hamid, Johnny Nelson, you know, Johnny, you know, like just many fighters he's good. Even some other fighters now, we've got, um, we've got young kid Galahad coming up right through the ranks, you know, he's from, he's a, he's a product through the Winkerback Gin. Kel Brook himself, the current uh, IBF 
um, worldweight champion, you know, just beat Sean Porter. So through the Winker Bank Gym, years and years of, of product, of, it showed that the conveyor belt of what he's putting in there showed out. So for me, it's a shame that he's not in there and I'm glad Lee brings him up. And for you guys listening over in the States, you don't know about him, go do your research. You know, this Brendan Ingle definitely, definitely deserves it. In my opinion, definitely thumbs up. Glad Lee mentioned him, non-participant. Good job, Lee. I'm um, going to Beats. Yeah, I put him in my book. All right, so that's Beats is what Beats wants to say about that. Unless you, want to add any, unless you want to add anything else, Beats. No, 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 he's got loads of um, unorthodox fire. Like, even pe- people don't know about, like, Slug around too. He was unorthodox. And, hmm. you know, even like, um, I think he had Paul Silky Jones. I think they came from him. Yeah, yeah, he done his thing, man. Yeah, 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 I don't even know. Great stuff, great stuff. All right, so we go to Chris Caban. Um, your nominee for non participants. Okay, mine is a guy who used to call the fights for Showtime. Bobby Chiz, he used to call the strikes with Showtime with Freddie Pacheco and um, um, Al Alberts. I got him as my non participant. I got him as a, on calling the fights. I like the way he called fights. I think Jim Lamley shouldn't be on the list because he's biased, in my opinion. But I got Bobby Chiz. Bobby Chiz. I think he was announcer from the late 80s to the mid to mid, almost, yeah, to the early 2000s. Yeah, I remember Bobby Chess, man. Bobby Chess, definitely. All right, um, moving on. All right, so we Chris has put an argument out there that I'm gonna go to um, boxing beats. You agree with that? Um, I don't see how he would get in there, Chris, because he'd be trying to get nominated in there as a boxer, wouldn't he? So, um, um nominated in there as a boxer, though. Pardon? I don't think he's gonna make it as a boxer. His resume. So you know you're nominating, but no, that's all right, Chris. No problem. Beats good. Beats. The thing is, yeah, you guys try and refrain from having exchange. Beats, do you disagree? Um, as an announcer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would. I probably would. I probably would. Okay, that's the first. You guys here? You heard it first. It's the first guy shut down. So that's one. All right, um, Ben Umar. What do you think? Bobby Ches. As an uh, announcer, well, considering that he was a boxer and he wasn't that that great of a boxer, and then you're talking about an announcer, and I don't know his announcing resume like that, so I can't really put him in. But I can't really say he doesn't deserve to go in. So I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna say I'm gonna sit this one out because I mean I, my opinion is irrelevant at this point. Uh, you can't do that, really. You have to say yes or no. Well, then I'm gonna say no because of what he was as a boxer. Thank you very much. Lee? I don't know enough about him anymore to, to get involved. Lee, you need, to sort your, your, you need to sort your audio out, my friend. I'll say, right. Um, Go ahead. No, no, no well, I don't know enough about the guy, so. So, what is that? You, that's not an answer, is it? Well, yes, well, no, 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 because. Yeah, no, no, because, you know. You don't know enough about him. No. Mm-hmm. No, no, not only, not, not only that is obviously I don't know anything about. Yeah, if you don't know, then it's not. Then it's got to be not. Yeah, yeah, but then also, if it's the guy I'm thinking about on Showtime, he used to call the fights back back in the ni- early nineties and that. The the yeah, the that's the, yeah, that's the guy. That's the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then not really because I don't think he's that. I don't think he's had the longevity, you know, or, or the impact that other announcers that I know or for commentators have had. Okay. You know, but that's just my opinion but I'm not over in America at that time you know so I don't know so you're saying no, yeah? So for everyone yeah. listening... Okay, thanks very much, Lee. No problem. I mean, myself, Bobby Chess, man, I enjoyed his commentary. I be, I enjoyed it with him and Vernie Pacheco. But the thing is, yeah, like, um, as Chris pointed out, non for thing, um, Bobby Chess, you know, the longevity, and, you know, you'd like... You know, he used to be a former fire himself. He was pretty good at, at you know, breaking down the fights. But on, on this, probably the strength of, you know, how long he stayed in the game and stuff like that, and, you know, his contribute to it, you know, he was there when Mike Tyson, by an incident, if you remember him, you know, yelling, oh, Mike Tyson bit him in the ear. He's been in some some notable fights now. I can understand Mike Chris Ben because at a time, there's a pit time period where he was at every single fight. Every single fight. And, um, um, I mean, why not? If Larry Merchant, Larry, Larry look, Jim Lamptey, you know, he's, he's definitely, I think Jim Lamptey deserves to be on the list. Why not Bobby Chess? So I'll, I'll say yeah for Bobby Chess. So that's, um, for me, so that's me, 
um, I'm only one, so the rest is Lee has said no, Benumo says no, and so is Boxing and Beach. So Chris, Bobby Chess doesn't get in, and um, it's a shame, no, but that's the way it is. So Bobby Chess doesn't get in. All right, so we're gonna move to Benumo, non-participant. Go ahead, Ben. I really didn't have a non-participant, but I, I'm just gonna uh, go with this one. I'm gonna go with James Ali Bashir. Oh, that's a good one. Because of all the people he's worked with, from just having knowledge from speaking to the man personally. He worked with Muhammad Ali, Angelo Dundee, um, Emmanuel Stewart, and those are just trainers. And then he worked with, I mean, and Muhammad Ali's a fighter, obviously. Worked with, he's working with Vladimir Klitschko, world champ. He worked with Eddie Chambers. He worked with Monty Barrett. And he worked with uh, Lennox Lewis and several other world champions. So I, I would say that uh, he, he has a good chance of getting in at some point in his life. Excellent. Whoa, that come out the blue. That goes good. I like that one. Beats, go ahead. You go um, first. Did he work with Ali or was he just in a camp? Um, no, you, you, you're supposed to say yes or no and give your case yes or no, Beats. Uh, uh, I, sh 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 I can't just do it because like, we give him interviews. That's, um, that's, that's, that's not right. Um... um I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say no. Thank you very much, Beats. Um, me myself personally, um, from hearing from the man himself of, of of where he's been and who's he knows, he's accomplished outside the ring. Um, the Klitschko's value him. Emmanuel Stewart valued him very much. There's contributional things that we don't know. And obviously, we learn about Mr. Ali Bashir in non-participants. Is he? Should he be nominated? Um, with all the guys, some other guys on, on the sports ring, you know, you, you can put him in, you know, some of the guys I can bring up names I don't know too much about, but I do, you know, we are learning about him. And I think, why not Mr. Bashir? Not because we do interview him. Oh yeah, we interviewed him, but some of the stuff he's been and seen and been around. Um, I have no, I have no, cause people need to mute themselves, by the way, because I know, make sure we don't have no feedback for the people. Um, I have no, no objection to it, but I don't know enough about him um, in terms of, you know, what he's done. I know he's worked with the, uh, Eddie Chambers and um, thing, but he knows he's been around that thing, so I'm not too sure um, you get in. I'd like to, but I think I'm gonna probably say no. Um, so I, I, Mr. Abishir doesn't get in from me. Um, Chris Kabad. Um, not right now. I ain't gonna put him in right now, but he'll probably get in later on. Uh, why, 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 what was the reason, Chris? Because um, it ain't enough information what he did back in the day. Okay, thanks very much, Chris. Uh, Lee, um, UK blogger. So I should call you UK blogger by your name, um, but um, go ahead, UK boxing blogger news. Uh, it's, it's a tough one, isn't it? You know, we, we interviewed a guy, but the stories he tells, the old style um, trainers, like, oh, I'm not I'm not fully aware of what all their achievements and that, but, you know, he, he name drops, like, your Sam Solomons and other trainers uh, been around the Ali camps he's done his apprentice the, the the hard and long way been been involved with some of the greats of the sport you know um, he has had some good fighters just recently you know um, you, you like your Monty Barracks as well you know he, he's a good honest coach he's got that old line philosophy work with Lennon Stewart been around the Lennox camps um, and now I think this is his first like superstar fighter in Vlad. So maybe in a few years' time, if Vlad goes on a run, and he, if everybody, you know, everybody knew who Vlad's trainer was, Emmanuel, um, maybe he needs a few more fights for everyone to know he's in the corner and he's improving Vlad. Like if Vlad's just shown some new things like that, that's good. You know, maybe that improves under his coaching. You know, so. Lee, you need to come in the mic. You kind of, you kind of drifting away, and we still wait. We wait for maybe your answer, mate. Years. Go yeah, ahead. Maybe in a few years, man. Like maybe if if he teaches Vlad like, some new stuff, and there is evidence that he's actually improving for that with some of that footwork and that left hook that I've never seen before with Vlad, and he is getting a bit more aggressive. But maybe in the next year or two, he can put his own print on Vlad, and that may be enough to get him in the Hall of Fame in the future. But. His, his um, experiences in life and boxing, second to none. And on that, as a man and as a person, he, and his experiences, he should do 
but that is not really the criteria. He's got to have an impact on the sport, and I think he's on his way to doing it. I agree with you. At the moment. Our great sub, Lee, well, you, Lee says no, and um, that's the second nominee um, not inducted in the Hall of Fame, but definitely a worthy thing. And, and yeah, and look, he don't get in the, this round, but who say, like, um, you know, uh, Bobby Chez and Mr. Ali Bishop will get in the second round, so that's four no's on the panel um, for... Um, for Mr. Ali, um, James Ali Bashir, but who, who never knows next year of a we with uh, Usek and some of his other charges that he might get in. Um, we're moving on to my first pick, not a non-participant. Now, um, you guys or may or not knows um, this guy, but um, for me, definitely, um, I, I can't see no argument with the panel. But if I do, I'm ready to, you know, ready to, to negotiate or debate. Um, the Colonel Bob Sheridan. Now, um, for you, if we all don't know the Colonel Bob Sheridan. He's been around the boxing game since the rumble in the jungle and probably that's the time probably i recognize him from so i'm probably going to go from then but don king obviously went to zaire and his commentary on that um also with um george foreman's career um obviously um joe frazier's career and this guy's followed everyone he's followed all the fights from from ali all the greats down all the greats down the line he's been everywhere Hagler, hearns commentating on every single big fight out of anything i probably al bernstein probably learned his gig from Bob Sheridan. Bob Sheridan is is one of the best uh, announcers, ring announcer comments since since Don Dunphy. Excellent, excellent, superb. Like you, you can listen to him and listen. If you don't need to be there, you can you could you know he, he could be talking on the radio. You could actually picture what the man's saying. Excellent. You all action when this guy, even if the fight's boring, he'll make it good. You know this guy is really good at his his craft. Definitely for me, first ballot Hall of Fame. The Colonel Bob Sheridan. Um, that's all I have, I have much of him. Let's see what the panel knows about him. See if the panel uh, uh, votes him in. Uh, I want to go to um, Ben Umar. Well, if the criteria is that if you don't know much about him, you got to say no, then I got to say no because I really don't know this man's history. And I don't want to say no, but I, I don't know his history, so I can't sit here and act like I do. So I'm going to have to just say no if that's the criteria we're, we're working with. Hey, but I just informed you of what he just done, his accomplishments. But if you don't know, yeah. that, fair enough. If you don't want to vote him because you don't know enough about him, after than what I just said. So, okay, fine. Well, 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 Arrow, Arrow, re say what you said again for me, please. No, no, it's all right, Umar. If you say no, that's I'm all right, I'm going to say it, Arrow, because I think what no, it is. No, 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 no. If you didn't get it, if you don't know him, then the thing. Yeah. It was summed it up there. Like, you know, no, 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 no. Just, okay. just go in and, and to do. If you don't know it, then say no. Fair enough, Umar. You say no. Yeah. Right, okay, Umar. I'll move on to Chris Gaban. Go ahead, Chris. He definitely get in. I heard him call fights. I like his voice too. He gets excited when somebody gets knocked down. <laughs> I got him. I got him going in. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, Lee. Yeah, I got him going in. Is he the guy? What? What? Yeah, yeah, I got him going in from five. Basically, from what I, I think I know the, the front, I've heard some of his announcing. But from what you said, I don't know much. I don't know enough about the guy. But what you said convinced me to say yes, so it's not like what you said didn't convince me and I don't know enough about the guy, so I've got to say no, so on that respect, I've got to say yeah. You say, okay, you say, okay, all right. Box and beat some Rams. Yep, 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 alongside Reg Guthridge, the UK's, you know what I mean? Go ahead, Beats. Is he the guy who did like shavers and homes and stuff? Yeah, like, yeah, that's him. Yeah, that guy's got to get him. Yeah, yeah Beast. I think Beast may have some te oh, technical yeah. problem there, Beats. Yeah, Beast has got some technical problems. We're gonna wait for him to come back, fight fans. But bear in bear in mind again, yeah, that the panel, you know, Umar's being authentic to say he don't know too much about him. But that's just, that's the whole thing about this. You know, we're informing you to make sure you guys probably go and do your research on the on um on some of the guys we've mentioned and um, whether you think they're gonna get in or, or not. Um. Oh, did that guy that do the Fall of Frazier fights, all that fights? Yeah, all, all the fights, that's from, you, you, you got it, Lee, from 1974. Yeah, yeah, no, that guy's got it. From 1974 onwards, if you, if you, you follow all time, then you're, he's commenting and everything. He moves more or less, yeah. in his later career, he was, he's, he's working with, at the minute, with, um, with Bob Arum at the minute on, um, on top rank, on the top rank cards, but he was mostly with, um, um, Don King, doing all the Don King fights and stuff. Boxing Beats has some technical problems, um, so we won't have his vote at the minute. And we're gonna move our uh, boxing beats. Just back. Yeah, okay, man. Um, go ahead, beats. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because like the, the colonel, yeah, 
can, you can commentate on the radio and like it's just like it's nearly as good as watching it. He yeah, has to go with it. Go with Bob Sheridan. Excellent, excellent boxing and beats. What we're gonna do? We're gonna take a break for a second, give a go thing, and then we're gonna come back with our second ballots on the on the Hall of Fame. So stay tuned, and we'll catch you in a sec. <laughs> 